Carapac, Rick Asseltine, back when this magazine came out in, in our region in 2012, Rick talks about something in here where we're going to be living in a world which everyday things in and around us will have a voice. He says it's the Internet of Things, everybody starts calling it Internet of Things back then. It still wasn't really crossing the, uh, the tipping point, but I said, uh, who else can I learn from in the region that is working in this space? Uh, that was to the late 2014. Um, and I said, well, uh, the only way to find out was if I ran a meetup group, I could sort of pull everybody out from the, from the surrounding area and maybe meet like-minded people that could teach me how to keep moving forward and uh, eventually play with more of this stuff. So we kick it off 2014, it's grown to 1,200 plus members. We have uh, unique collisions from some of the brightest minds and the hottest IoT startups in the region. Cognitive systems, uh, you might want to just Google that one and put a note in your calendars or, or your books about that. This is what this guy's working on is really, really cool stuff. Uh, but we have a lot of startups that come in through, working on cool things, great meetup, great vibe. Uh, I do a conference last year, that was our first one. Uh, we'll do another one in September. And so, yeah, so that's a bit of the backstory on IoT Waterloo and kind of how I came into technology. Kind of a weird path, but that's how I got here. So if data is the new gold rush, invent new shovels. How many people are entrepreneurs or have ever heard that term before? One? Okay. So the idea is everybody, so everybody's going to be rushing into the space right now, right? You're going to make some wearable, you're going to make some IoT device, you're going to connect it. So is everybody else. So think about the context of that. If you're all arriving at the same time and you're rushing in, who cashes in in a gold rush, right? Back in the cold, uh, in uh, California in that day, fucking Levi's made blue jeans, okay? Who's, they're killing it, they're st still an iconic brand. So use, uh, use your brains here and think about the context of everybody rushing to the same space. You know, you're gonna make another Fitbit? No, you gotta, you gotta start thinking about the broader spectrum of where this is going when you connect everything to the internet. Um, so create new experiences or solve new problems in a meaningful way, okay? Where can you start in wearables? Think about human emotion. What are you passionate about? Work in that space. I like music. I'm also a, a DJ. I'm in the drum and bass. So this kind of came from skateboarding and graffiti culture. Has anybody seen the sub-pack? Nobody's seen this? Okay, you gotta YouTube that. Um, so this is a way to experience club, deep club bass right on your back. Nobody else can hear it. I could sit in the office and wear this. It feels like I'm in a nightclub. So the way that they have this technology, yeah, you should really check this out, uh, is insane. So it's like, how many people have been, I don't know, probably never been to a rave or like in a, in a, in a club. Well, anyways, deep bass, right? Like you feel music in a club. You don't listen to it, you feel it because the bass just moves through you. Sub Pack is playing in that space, so is this company. Um, both uh, working on the same technology, but designing the way that it's fitted to you in a different way can, can have value, right? So where can you start in other IoT applications? Think about the value behind making dumb objects smarter. Alex Lane uh, approached me at one of my events. Aterica Health was looking for a UX guy. Uh, I was really excited uh, about the opportunity, so I jumped on board because I have a, an allergic uh, reaction to bees. So I wanted to make this device because uh, an EpiPen, you gotta carry everywhere, and I forget mine all the time. So human behavior is uh, repetitive, and you get in a groove, and you, you know, it's, it's hard to change that groove. A device like this can now tell my phone if I leave the house and I forget it, hey, you forgot your EpiPen, so I can go back and grab it. That's one of the values of uh, this device. Or even if it's a mom who's trying to uh, make sure that her child is safe and she's out of her care. You know, moms have enough worry on them already of raising a family, let alone now, does my little one have that EpiPen that they need to save their life? So she can quickly open the app and look, yep, uh, little Billy or little Jane has got them on it, got, them, uh, got the device on them, and then have peace of mind, okay? But also gets behavior, the behavior modification starts to change. You can use gamification in some of these systems. So give little Billy a reward if he carries it more often because you have the data now to support that. So if he forgot it three times last month, but he only forgets it one time this month, hey, give him a, give him a reward, right? So build you know, gamification into your stuff. My mom has actually got an allergy to uh, some medications. Uh, and I don't know if you know, but an EpiPen is in like a little cardboard box. She keeps it on the windowsill because it's easily accessible. 
So it's in, this, it's in our line of sight, it's in the kitchen, but it's right beside the window. So when the sun shines in, the epinephrine medicine in that case is expired if the temperature goes uh, above 30 degrees or below 15. The, the medicine in this is, is garbage. It's, it's, it's been expired because the sun was beating down on it. And I tell my mom, I said, Mom, you gotta move that thing. I'm making a smart object that does it. You gotta move it and it's still there because humans are very particular in our patterns, okay? So if you took that object now, dropped in the Vita, uh, I give that to my mom and now she can get a nudge when she's watching Netflix, right? If the sun's beating down, it's like, boom, contextually, um, it's not, you know, me say, nagging her saying, hey, you should really move that to a different location. She's got the context, oh, shit, I've been meaning to change, you know, move that. And then she can go and change it before it actually ruins the medicine. So that's, uh, there's a lot of value around uh, using some, uh, connecting objects. Uh, Eterica is a great example of that. I do, I do have it here. So if anybody's interested to see what we've built, uh, beta release is going to be out next week. So I have that if anyone wants to see it after. Um, so another cool app, uh, capstone project I'm working on right now with three Conestoga students, two of them are here, is something we're calling the drone spotter. So uh, with the proliferation of drones everywhere, right? Government people can't keep up. The drones are everywhere. So the rise of hobby drone technology is creating problems faster than authorities and regulators can keep up. Uh, there's no doubt about it, you know, drones containing drugs, dropping stuff into prisons, running them over the border. Um, so that's just part of the problem. Then you get into stuff like this. This is crazy. Yeah. How about one? How about one of those flying over into the space that doesn't belong? Right? We don't want these around parliament buildings. We don't want these in uh, restricted airspaces, private spaces. Uh, so solutions are being sought after by government, private sector to defend themselves against new risks. So um, I'm working with a few students. We're, we're setting up acoustic uh, sensors to listen for drones and using pattern recognition technology to alert uh, whoever wants an alert about it that there's something in your airspace. Uh, so Harpreet, Kushi, Sahil, Sahil's not here, but Kushi is. Where's Harpreet? Hey, there you are. Okay. So you can come say hi to the students after. Uh, we're going to be probably done this by the end of the month. And then uh, the proof of concept. The future of technology is calm. Calm technology improves human experiences without announcing its presence until it's desired. Does anybody know what that is around our neck? What is it? Airbag. Airbag. Yeah, that's right. It's a helmet. It's an invisible helmet. Isn't that interesting? Uh, design can allow you to use your imagination in new ways. If you, if you really want to explore on how to make cool shit, start thinking like way out there. Like what, what the fuck if? Right? Like, oh, excuse my language, I think it was a little bit here. So, you know, what if you really push the boundaries, right? Go out there. These people did. Uh, and this is crazy. If you ever see a video on this, the, the, the inflatable helmet uh, inflates as soon as you're impacted by a vehicle. Crazy stuff. Aterica's smart EpiPen case, of course I'm going to plug them. I need one of these and so do a lot of moms, dads, families that are trying to manage anaphylaxis. This is a great uh, uh, product that's coming to the market. Don't let the Internet of Things become a sideshow of devices that demand your full attention while pretending to make life simpler, okay? Internet of shit. Oh, there's a kid here. I wasn't expecting little ones here. Sorry. Okay, so uh, my toilet paper holder tweeted I'm out of paper. What? Come on. While we're on the top of that stuff, on the topic of that stuff, if anybody here makes a smart coffee machine, I swear to God, I'm going to tell my American friends to vote for that guy, okay? Let's not make smart coffee machines here today. Design technology that respects our attention. Principles of calm design, peripheral attention, context, ambient awareness. Okay, approve attention through a variety of senses. You know, um, work on stuff that matters. Okay, we just covered a little bit about, about me, Waterloo Region, uh, IoT uh, community. Examples of good IoT design and building cool stuff is, uh, is about thinking contextually and creating new calm experiences. Connect with me on LinkedIn. You guys got my name? Always interested to hook up with bright young minds. Uh, the you know lots of fun things happening. So connect with me. Thanks for coming out and rocking here today. Thank you.
One other thing, while I, got, while I still got gotcha, you, there's some Easter eggs on here, which is a couple links, okay, about Calm Technology, because literally that's what's going to differentiate anything in the future, is if you can understand human emotion, okay? So there's a couple of Easter eggs on here at the end of my slide. If somebody wants to go through, go through one of the organizers, get your hands on the slide, because these links are uh, very, very cool. They'll teach you about where it came from, who's pioneering it right now, this girl Amber Case out of New York City. Really cool links, those are the people you want to uh, follow. They could help you out on your project. Uh, that was amazing, Ian, thank you so much.